Hi there, this is Eugene Blanchard, and this is part six of Do-It-Yourself Dyno. This one's going to talk about gear ratios versus moment of inertia. Uh, first part we're going to talk about is the issues with the previous testing, uh, why we've gone on to look at the gear ratios. Uh, we're going to look at the effect of gear ratios with the moment of inertia. Uh, we're going to change our gear ratio from 3 to 1 to two, 1 to 1 and test. Uh, we're going to reduce the moment of inertia mass and then test it also. When I first started testing, I was getting results of 1.14 1 1 horsepower. I thought, well, that's okay. I thought my motor was uh, about 1.5 horsepower motor. So I thought maybe it was just the, uh, the settings, the moment of inertia wasn't correct. Uh, then what I found is the specs for the motor was 3 quarter horsepower, so 0 0.750 horsepower, right? So I said, okay, well, well we got to do testing. Uh, verify that the moment of inertia was correct. Uh, we did that in the last video, in uh, part five, and found that, that it was actually uh, what, what uh, Simple Dyno had calculated and what I had measured were relatively close, nowhere near uh, 0.75 versus 1.14 or 1.5 or horsepower. Now, in my setup, I had uh, um, my motor, Connect up to an adapter to 10 tooth uh, sprocket uh, to the brake rotors with a 30 tooth, so we had a 3 to 1 ratio. Um, the idea was is that uh, it was sort of the, the gear ratio was like a differential, and we were talking this would be wheel horsepower and we'd be measuring motor horsepower or crank horsepower, right? So I'm thinking, okay, this is how this would work this gear ratio. Um, Having ruled out a uh, moment of inertia, what, what do you do is when all else fails, you read the manual. So I'm going through the manual on the non-critical parameters, and they had a line here that simple dyno calculates RPM1 motor and motor torque for a chassis dyno by using the ratio of wheel diameter to roller diameter and the gear ratio. I went, oh, that's interesting. So we do have a gear ratio in there, um, and we do have factors put in wheel diameter roller. Maybe what happens, I've entered the wrong values in. They also had another uh, section down here. If it's for motor dy dynos, right, so this is sort of a wheel dyno. For motor dynos, you set the wheel diameter value to the same value as roller diameter and set the gear ratio to 1. Oh, all right, so we've got some kind of conflicting information here for the way that I'm running this dyno. So I went and looked at my initial setup, and what I had is I had the gear ratio as 3, I had the wheel diameter as 100, and my roller diameter as 280. So 280 over 100 is 2.8, and then I also have a gear ratio of 3 in there. So if you multiply those together, 2.8 times 3, it's approximately 9 to 1 ratio. So maybe this is where my problem was. We uh, At this point, what I had done is I had uh, put the corrected moment of inertia into the system. I made sure that all of the uh, all of the fittings in the axle, screws and everything were tight because every every dyno run the uh, uh, fittings, we, the motor mounts would get loose, the uh, shaft mounts would get loose, so the set screws that are holding the gears would get loose and that. So I tightened everything down. Now I'm getting even a higher horsepower output. Uh, it would be approximately 1.5 horsepower. Right, so anywhere if, if I did multiple tests, it'd be anywhere from 1.4 to 1.6 horsepower, which is definitely wrong. So I said, okay, I'm going to play with these values. So I set the gear ratio to 1, and then I set the wheel diameter to 100 and uh, to 280, which gave me approximately 3 to 1, and nothing happened. I still got 1.5 horsepower. So I set the gear ratio to 3, wheel diameter 280 and 280, so now we have a 1 to 1 ratio on the wheel diameter and the gear ratio is 3, and still I'm getting around 1.5 horsepower. So then I said, okay, I'm going to set everything to 1 to 1, so I set the gear ratio to 1, wheel diameter 280, roller diameter 280, and still I'm getting in the ratio of 1.5 horsepower. So these non-critical parameters did nothing to the uh, output, the measurement, and there has to be another factor. At this point, the shaft threads wore right here. So what I, I have an adapter. The uh, on the motor, the axle actually has a threaded shaft, and you'd uh, put. This is from a, a table saw, so you'd put your saw in there, and then there was a reverse thread here, and you'd put a nut on, and you'd clamp the the saw blade onto uh, the shaft here. 
I had made an adapter that fit over top of it with uh, two two set screws here, and they were chewing up the threads, and they wore, uh, even though it was uh, the axle was supported here, and the motor was supported, this adapter was uh, flopping around, wobbling quite bad that I couldn't use it. So I had to go to uh, rev number two and do some more testing looking at the gear ratios. This is version two and uh, what I've done with it is I've put one to one gear ratio. So I put a 30 tooth here, 30 tooth here, flipped it over on this side because this is going to rotate this way. It's going to force the motor rotation into here. So this just has to stop it from flipping over and that. Uh, so this thing is going to be spinning around 3,400 RPM. It's going to be kind of scary, so I'm just doing a little test here. And hopefully uh, it doesn't blow up. All right. Here we go. So what happened is it blew the breaker. It was uh, too much of a load for the motor. Okay, test number two or three here. And this time I've only got one brake rotor on. So let's see what it does now. Nothing. Okay, flip the breaker. And the breaker tripped again. like I blew a breaker. Yep. Blew the breaker. So I'm drawing more than 15 amps. Let's do a, a summary of what's happened so far. When I had two brake rotors and a 3 to 1 gear ratio, um, this worked well. It spun up very quickly in three seconds, didn't br trip any breakers and that, but the horsepower was uh, incorrect. It was measuring about 1.5 horsepower in that area when I have everything all dialed in. Uh, when I did two brake rotors and a one-to-one -one gear ratio, uh, what happened was is that um, it would throw the breaker right away. It would hardly get up to a thousand RPM. A one brake rotor, a one to one ratio, would get up to about 2100 RPM and uh, blow the breaker. Uh, the other issue that happened, at 2100 RPM, the chain was bouncing, it was dangerous. I wouldn't want to take it to 3600 RPM. That led to some research. I'm saying, okay, what does a gear ratio, how does that affect the moment of inertia? Well, I found it was actually a pretty simple formula. Moment of inertia of the motor is equal to the moment of the inertial of the load divided by the gear ratio squared. Right? So we're using a 3 to 1 gear ratio. So if I put a 3 in here, the 3 squared is 9. So what I was doing was basically dividing the moment of inertia of the rotors by 9. It was re reducing it quite a bit. So what happened is I had two rotors. Uh, three to one gear ratio, three seconds spin up. Uh, it was doing one ninth of the moment of inertia that I had measured. Uh, two rotors and one to one breaker, it tripped. Uh, one rotor, one to one breaker, it tripped. Uh, too large a moment of inertia. So I'm thinking one rotor, uh, two to one ratio would be a quarter of our moment of inertia. Maybe that would work. I was also looking at the formula for calculating moment of inertia. Um, when we did a measurement and what happened is that we have the moment of inertia is equal to gravity times the mass uh, times r squared the oscillation time squared over 4 times the string length times pi squared I thought it would be as simple as that well if I changed 
the mass by removing one rotor, then the uh, moment of inertia would reduce proportionally. So if I halved it, then I would have half the moment of inertia. Then I realized that the oscillation time might change in it squared. So it's not as simple as just reducing the mass. I would have to reduce the mass, take the whole thing, put it on here, and measure it to see. I did make a, uh, a spreadsheet, and on the spreadsheet it's based on the two rotor load. Uh, the moment of inertia for the road that we measured was 0 0.152. Uh, the motor maximum RPM was 3600 RPM. Uh, the rotor maximum RPM that would, I would consider safe would be about 1500 RPM. So I made a column with gear ratio starting at 1 to 1 all the way up to our 3 to 1 ratio uh, in 0.1 gear ratio increments. Then I had what the motor would see for a moment of inertia. So when it was one to one, it would see the same as a rotor. So it started at 0 0.152. I put another decimal place in just to, because it at the very bottom here for accuracy and that. So then I did the calculation. I said if it's 1.1 gear ratio, it would take this value, divide it by the square of that and get this. And did the same all the way down here. So when we had our three to one gear ratio, what we saw is that we were having one-ninth, the motor was seeing one-ninth of the moment of inertia that we expected. So there are some things that we can do. Uh, one of them is that we can play with the gear ratio and what I've done is here's our RPM in uh, uh, 3600. So our ma motor maximum RPM is 3600. At a one-to-one -one gear ratio our rotor will see the same RPM. And then I just applied the gear ratio all the way down here. Right? So when we were at 3 to 1, we were seeing about 1200 RPM. It took 3 seconds to reach full RPM. Now we were getting an error because what we were entering in as a moment of inertia in simple dyno was 0.152. So one solution we can do is still use our 3 to 1 gear ratio, but this time enter in 0 0.0169 as our moment of inertia. And what we can do is we can play with our settings, I'll show you that in a second, uh, so that we can get that, and then we'll do a test on that. Right? Uh, another thing that we can do is we can change our gear ratio. So I'm looking at uh, 1500 as maximum. Uh, if I go to 2.5 gear ratio, which would be, a, I believe it's a 12 tooth gear, then I could get 1440, and I, my new moment of inertia would be 0 0.0243. And hopefully that will take longer than three seconds to ramp up. Maybe I th if it was a linear calculation, I'd say it's about four seconds, four point four and a half seconds to get there. So that's another option we can do. Now, I had mentioned that what we can do is use our three to one gear ratio and then set our moment of inertia that simple dyno sees to this number. Where our roller mask, this is on our dyno setup, we can change this value so that the actual dyno that it calculates would come out to our 0 0.0169. So that's an option here too. Right? So we can play with this. This is just the calculation. This is the value that it uses to do the, uh, uh, the dyno readings on that. So we can play with that. So that's uh, something we're going to do. Uh, something else I was thinking is that what we can do is uh, we can use bicycle gears and uh, we, have a, we have our chain ring and our cog gears and what we can find out is that we can actually um, get different gear ratios using the bicycle gears. For right now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, 10 tooth gear back on and then I'm going to put 0 0.169 so simple dyno sees it as 0 0.619 and then we'll take it from there. Alright, uh, uh, so we have a little bit to do for the next time. Thank you very much for watching.